Hey guys, and welcome to this extended special cut of our season three sailing adventures, reproduced for your enhanced viewing pleasure. Recently, the channel has really taken off, so we thought we'd pop this together for both longtime followers and newer viewers who might like to get to know us a little better. We've left nothing out, so you'll have the whole story all in one place. It's been carefully crafted into chapters with timestamps of key topics down in the description box below. It's one big adventure as we hop through the stunning Dodecanese Islands from Leros to Rhodes, but we also wanted to show the kaleidoscope of experiences a sailing lifestyle offers and a true account of what onboard relationships actually go through. In this day and age of AI and curated viewing experiences, we'd like to think you'll struggle to find much else as true to life on the tube. So, grab yourself a cuppa, maybe some tissues, and kick back as we bring you aboard our life on an ocean wave. I think the first thing we wanted to do was start off by saying thank, thank you. you. Yeah, like a massive thank you to everyone who has liked, subscribed, commented, supported us on Patreon, our website, our website. Yeah. yeah, and just like. We literally, we wouldn't be sat here right now if it wasn't for you guys. So this episode is going to be a quick flyby account of winter in Laros. And at the same time, we're going to have you here, have a barbecue and a couple of beers, tell you a few stories. Bit of a catch up, just, really. Just really, yeah, a bit of a catch up mm. until we jump into the season. So Ross caught a fish the other day. He actually went out and got a massive sea bass. Already? All good. How come you're not wearing a spearfishing suit? Oh, I get changed when we get there. Plus? Random. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Love you. Love you too. Catch me a big one. Okay. Telemera. Oh, the boat. The boss over here. The lady of the boat. Oh, okay. The economic system. Economic systems, you know, these are the services of the, of the show. Okay. Cool. You are the, the people you must pay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the customer, that's right. Hello. Okay. So you have some fish? Uh, so um, what have we got here? Ah, sea bass. You have some more sea bass? Yes. Ah, here we go. Oh, look at them. That's what we want. Barristow Bully. Well, that was easier than spearfishing. Oh, Barristow Bully. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Barristow. So Ross caught a fish the other day. He actually went out and got a massive sea bass, which like I'm proper chuffed about because I haven't like, we haven't had a sea bass before and I'm not actually sure if it's gonna fit in the barbecue. Yeah, we've got like, two. Got two? Yeah. You've got two? We've got two. What? So we left you in the last episode where we- Basically had the complete wind blown out of our sails at the end of the season. And we were like really dubious about whether we were going to stop or not. And then a couple of things happened in succession. We very nearly beached the boat. Get up oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. I feel sick. We got caught with our pants down and we decided, okay, Mother Nature is telling us it's time to, to stop. stop. Yeah. And so we did. I kind of feel a bit sad that it's the end of the season, but we like Laros and there are a lot of pros to being in the marina there. I would like to ask you actually, Ross, yeah. what would your highlights be of living in a marina? There are so many pros and cons to being in a marina and on anchor. For me personally, on anchor, I'm always looking at the wind, I'm always checking our anchor, I'm like monitoring the boat, 24 7. so when we're in a marina particularly laros it's such a sheltered spot anyway yeah. and as you've seen in the drone footage there's a big wall in the sheltered spot it's like the safest place ever in a nutshell when holly blue is tied up i can forget about the safety of the boat you almost feel like a slight weight is lifted off your shoulders when you go yeah. and bed down in the marina for a period of time the kids could just walk off the boat jump on their bikes go for a little ride around and they had just the ultimate freedom there. They had like every granny and grandpa they could ever oh, yeah. dream of having on boats all around them. We had some old friends there before, but also we made a lot of new ones and the community in Laros on the whole 
it's just so good. There's something about in winter where when it is a bit colder and you go and socialize with people, you're down in the saloon and you're all sort of huddled around a table. Birthday, dear Marco. Daddy. Christmas, choir yeah, singing. We, have... we wish you a very good Christmas and a happy new year. Yay! Yay! Well done, John. Well done, Noah. <laughs> I get that one as well. Oh yeah, we had a children's birthday party on a beautiful big super yacht. <laughs> So the latter part of the winter was when the dreaded lift out happened. <laughs> so the lift out went really smoothly. Sebastian just said, everything that is small inside is good to go in. Yatas, Kalimera. And we then went on to dry dock, which Laura loved, didn't you? You loved it. <laughs> I went into dry dock with like this glamorous idea of, yeah, it's gonna be like camping. No rocking around. We're not gonna rock around. We're gonna be up in the sky with the birds. It's gonna be amazing. Suddenly we are 12 feet off the ground. I'm like major anxiety every time any of our children have to get on and off the boat. It's quite high. Ross under the boat, sanding. Oh, the for sanding. For hours on end. Sanding, Everything was sanding, covered sanding. in a little like layer of blue fine dust. Mm. And let's put it this way. I was in an Airbnb within a week. <laughs> Do you know what? I I'm never ever gonna live with these guys on dry dock again. <laughs> yeah, that's like, one thing we learned. We had quite the winter of maintenance work, blah, 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 blah. One of those seasons, you know what it's like. If you're a boat owner, you always have every now and again, one winter where you just have so much work to do and then you have a couple of maintenance winters. And you have worked tirelessly day in and day out, grafting for three weeks. And so we get back in the water. and we have our first sail. Off we go. First sail of the season. Bye, Sebastian. <laughs> so nice. Hi. Bye. Bye. And we have our first sail, drop anchor in this beautiful place, and the engine won't start. That was lovely. What's going on in here then? You're supposed to be in bed. <laughs> I don't blame you. He's always having to get this out of here, all the stuff, and that's where the star battery is. So I think he might have knocked something. Just fitted um cable with the same label today in there, which is a sterling label, and it's because we've got a sterling battery charger there. I mean, so I've seen nothing so to I know me. what that one is. So we're currently a, a ship it's up the creek without a paddle or an engine. Luckily, there's no wind for a week, which is pretty much unheard of here in Greece. Mother Nature is watching out for us. Nothing's happening. I was just pulling every single panel off the boat, going through all the electrical system. You were pulling your hair out. I just actually. could not find the issue. The fuses were fine. I checked everything. I can't believe it. It's just literally a snap wire. I can't believe I haven't seen that. <laughs> Always the last thing you expect. So I've just taken off the nut to the 
negative part of the alternator and look at this. How hard was that to see? That is the problem, I'm sure. Okay, so... So, the lights aren't working, the alarm's not working, but... Right, that's Start weird. We couldn't do that before, right? No. Right, well, that's the most important thing. <laughs> we can actually move if we need to. Mm. How weird. Ah, the revs are working now. Oh, maybe it's suddenly coming back. Well, to obviously work. the revs would work because it would only work when the engine's on. Oh, yeah, of course. So Strange. she's got lights. Another dodgy connection. That's come out, look, this one. Now. It all crosses our anchor. If the winds pick up, if anything happens and we need to flip and go anywhere, we can actually leave. In fact, we can just sleep at night now. That'd be nice too. I know they say don't reward children with treats, but do you want to give it to him? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Woo! Ching! Ka-ching! Oh. The Sterling alternator charger is a great piece of kit and quite easy to install. However, installing it in the engine compartment caused it to overheat. Therefore, I would recommend installing it outside the engine compartment, but as near to the alternator as possible. When you open a window, open it right up. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Oh, it's a lump and half. Ooh. How about that? Do you think I can push it in? Get a needle and pop it. No, no, you don't. It's not. It's not a blister. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get quite hungry. Okay, let's get to it then. Yeah, no one likes a hungry woman. No. See you in a bit. Okay, guys, this is really simple. We're just going to pat down the fish so it's dry, and then we're going to put the onion and the lemon inside, put a couple of slits in pour a little bit of olive oil on, and then we're gonna wrap it up in foil, stick it in the barbecue. So that's the fish done. Mm -hmm. Laura's gonna do the salad now. Start as we mean to go on. Are you a cucumber or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Chop it up. With the samurai sword. You're chopping it like it's bloody logs. That's how you do it. Greek salads are always notoriously chunky. Oh wow, that was smooth. Yeah, that's how it's done. Look, didn't even have to touch the tomato. So the recipe goes, according to my guesstimations, two very large tomatoes, half a cucumber, green pepper. The green pepper is smaller. Onion, this will be a clincher. Oh, oh. <laughs> I just got it all over myself. <laughs> if you're gonna use a knife like this, you've got to use it properly. Rustic style. Yeah, exactly. This isn't a dainty, fancy old blade. It's a proper hack it up blade. And I'm going to go fine with this, actually. I am going to chop this like a lady. Oh, that's good. You get really fine onion slices out of it. What that on top. No Greek salad, it's complete without. A vinaigrette, olives and feta cheese. So we're going to go with the olives. And I have noticed usually for some reason about eight i always seem to get like eight olives on my salad mm. okay so we've got the feta cheese the olives now we're going to drizzle some of the vinaigrette which has got all kinds of lovely things and you'll see earlier on i personally like to drizzle a little bit of balsamic glaze over the top just because I like a bit of a sweet tang to my salad. But this is the final product. Now all we need is a fish to go with it. Well, that's your job. So we've got our well-used barbecue. Just gonna let that warm up a minute. Oh, just the right size. You do it six minutes each side, and then I'll show you the magic afterwards. So we're gonna prep the magic now. And we basically just half these. We do a bit more sophisticated than Laura. And these go on the side. Oh god, it's on fire. Should have oiled the foil more. Error on my part. 
So what we do now is while it's hot, drizzle some of this on, like this. Like this. This is the magic. Add some tomatoes, like this. Bit of dill. Look at that. I can't believe you caught that. If anyone's wondering where the boys have been this entire episode, well, we actually have babysitters tonight. So we've got some friends in a boat just like 200 metres that way. And they've got kids as well. And they're having a movie night tonight. So that is why they're not here at the moment. And they will, of course, be in the episodes coming up. But we just wanted to share our view of the winter with you and obviously this lovely catch and cook and just get the two of us me and him do you want to see the bread i baked earlier mm. if you believe that you believe anything yeah we all know who the baker is around here oh lovely good all-rounder isn't it yeah especially if you're a samurai I should do my hair like this well, like how you when i'm using hair. this i should yeah no, don't really tell nice. anyone that that's a secret <laughs> You actually look right. like a samurai when you go to bed. Dinner is served. So guys, what do you reckon? Out of 10, leave a comment below on our cooking. Who thinks we should start the Holly Blue kitchen? We'll start doing more cookery videos. Actually, we would, if you really wanted to see more cookery videos and us basically pretending like we know what we're talking about, then please do, as Ross says, comment below. And if you'd rather see more sailing, then also comment below. I know which is easier. <laughs> So, cheers to season three. Uh, 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 no. Cheers to you catching two fish. I never said I caught two fish. I said I got two fish. Okay, we'll talk about that later. To hopefully a bright future and to fair winds this season three. And to you guys for always being there. Thank you so much. Yamas. Yamas. In this episode, we fly the coop from Leros and sail to beautiful Kalimnos Island, where a surprise awaits. But make sure you watch to the end, where we debate the pros and cons of boat life versus land life. Did you sleep all right? Mm. I didn't. I'm just a bit nervous about today because number one, you said it's going to be a bit bumpy. Oh, I, a little bit uh, bumpy. Yeah, but you always say a little bit bumpy. You said it's going to be a little bit bumpy and it's our first proper sale of the season. Number two, the last time we went to Glimnos, we nearly lost Holly Blue on the rocks. So. Yeah, Why? Yeah, I'm shaking like a leaf. I feel sick. What are your thoughts? I'm really excited. I'm not even worried about today. Um, okay, that's, that feels me with confidence. The actually. waves are going to be about half a metre, and I think we might get some shelter from the land. It's not melting any winds, 15 knots, and we're going down with it. Okay. And it's not that far, it's 20 miles. We probably just need to get our confidence up again. It's always like that with anything, isn't it? Getting back on the horse. But remember as well, what happened last year was the end of the season approaching winter it's like nearly november and it was and a freak it's storm completely it? different time of year and i think that was just a freak bit of weather um i don't think you've got to worry about it right i better get ready i need to get my sea legs back look at my i'm cleaning my teeth look gorgeous <laughs> Check. Sunglasses, check. Hot sailor husband. <laughs> <laughs> check. <Damn. laughs> so we're just moseying out now. 
There's not a lot of wind here, but you can see just around the headland there that we should be able to pick some up. So we're gonna go out a bit away from the coast and try and grab this wind. No, it's not feeling very well, are you? I really want to tell you what the surprise is, but I don't want to spoil it. Mm. Mm. Could be. Oh. There's a couple of surprises, but the first one is one that's going to make you feel really comfortable. It's probably the word. I've been acting like a wild man, sleeping like a child. Nice and peaceful, isn't it? What was I even worried about? Do you know what I was thinking? I was thinking every time I say it's going to be bumpy, it kind of covers all events. I think I just say bumpy for everything, don't I? No, because if you hadn't said it was bumpy, then I probably would have slept well last night. Oh, OK. So I should just say it's going to be flat calm all the time then? I don't know. I give <laughs> up. I don't know what you should say. Anyway, because <laughs> hey, we never really know what's going to happen, but um, excited to get to Kalimnos. I'm excited to go to another island. I am. It's supposed to be um, one of the world's best climbing islands and it's got a lot of history as well, including the fact that the world's oldest sponge divers are there. So me and Noah are just doing some on-the-go artwork because we're bored. <laughs> We've got about an hour and a half to go before we actually get to Kalimnos. So our current project is parts of a flower and Noah is making a flower out of modeling clay and then we're gonna paint it later on and identify the flower parts. We also have some beautiful sea glass here which we're gonna decorate our flowers with. We're just getting ready to go. Anyone else just find the bit between getting ready and going very stressful with children. There may or may not be gin in the here. Right, ready? Yep. Is it all right, Laura? You're gonna be all right. But you know you're like a lab. Mm, the weather is clear and the sky is blue. So the surprise is, we're going to a house! Wow, look at this so pretty! Oh, Ross! Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, it's really lovely. And um, Safi was telling me that everything you see, she's made. So like she's made all of these little decorations and... Oh, it's so pretty. We don't have this much space, do we? Not that we're going to see a sheet at all. You could, that could be the kids' food table. And then coming through here. Bedroom numero one. This could be Josh's room, I think. I think Mummy and Daddy might sleep in here. It's very pretty. Let's go this what? way. This oh my gosh, I have a bath. I haven't had a bath for 18 months. Since we stayed with your mum and dad. I wonder what that smell was. 
Puppies? I can't even believe how beautiful this is. And the view. And you spend your birthday here. I know, right? After a bit of a rough year, to be let's fair. Let's go check upstairs. All right, let's go. They're dying to go and check it out. What's over then? The PS de Resistance. You guys excited? Yeah. Come on then, let's go downstairs. Okay, so the best thing about this bar is, which I have to say, I am beat now. I'm so tired, I'm gonna shut the door. I love those boys more than anything in the world, but <sighs> so how was your bath? Pretty amazing. I feel clean as a whistle. Do you want one in a bit? Uh, I would like one after dinner. Okay. We can... I'm so happy to bath every day in here until we leave this beautiful home. I think the takeaway's here, let's go. Okay. <laughs> so, pros and cons of land life versus boat life. Pro number one of boat life. I personally feel like you can relax a little bit more at sea knowing that your neighbours are usually around 20 to 30 metres away from you. We could be as noisy as we want. Laura gets to swim in her birthday suit. Enough. See you in cost. Just keep her happy. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Washing. Yeah. Moss? <laughs> the great thing about living in such close proximity, I feel, is that it forces you to form a stronger connection and be able to communicate well together because you literally have to all the tiny little nuances that you would normally get annoyed about about a person just end up you just have to let them go like living on a boat is literally the definition of saying pick your battles <laughs> it's just you just stop caring so much about the little things on a boat when it comes to ornaments and things mm. they have to be strapped down because you're sailing they're going to fall over and smash on the floor yeah, so you don't so have any your boat is kind of kid proof right yeah but the house we were in as lovely as it was there was so much beautiful little handmade ornaments mm. which means they're one of a kind and it was a little bit nerve-wracking that our kids were going to break something you're not the best on land when it comes to traveling either are you <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said on the day. You are um, terrible. I, I can get a bit stressed when there's loads of cars beeping you and um, there's lots of people around. Like I, I've very much adapted to this lifestyle. In comparison, when I'm steering Holly Blue, I often have a shower at the same time. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Driving a car with the kids screaming in the back, it's just a whole different ballgame. Having said that, we did have a really nice drive on the East Coast mm. where the roads open up we hardly saw any cars mm. and that was really cool yeah and the mountainous views that you drive by and where did we go we went to Bathy Bathy what do you think Laura not a bad place to spend a birthday it's all right isn't it beautiful That sounds like a plan. We could actually get Holly in there, mm. but I scoped it out and there's only really room for two boats and there were two boats there. So this is where being on land was quite convenient. Having a car, you can quickly see all the sights. And we also went to the Pirates of Kalimnos. 
So, if you are in a car, enjoying yourself and relaxing, hit the like button. And if you're it. not lying, it'll turn blue. I was going to say that. Wish that I could stay. Wish for this moment to never go away. But it's all in my mind. And though I know that there is nothing to find. You're a beautiful sight in the summer night And you can't put up a fight This is the coolest park I've seen in Greece <laughs> Mummy and Josh are having a serious one-on-one -on -one. Jenny, that off He's gonna win oh! Denied. Well done, Josh. High five. You're the winner. At Villa Next to the Sea. Obviously, the positives are just suddenly having so much space to breathe, a comfortable bed to sleep on that doesn't move all the time, <laughs> a bath. <gasps> Don't really have much more to say about that. You know how I feel about that. Everything's more accessible from a house. We got to just walk out the front door, go down the pathway, and you're straight into Missouri, which is a beautiful area of Kalimnos. Mm. Welcome. I asked God what is Greece and he said my home. I can't believe it. Where do you have to way down. <sighs> it was really nice just to relax. Laura likes to go running so she can literally just get dressed, do her stretches and out the door off you go. Go exploring. You know and the final pro of being in the house was the host on Airbnb. Which her name was Sevi. Yeah. We got to meet her and she was a really lovely lady, showed us around, really looked after us yeah, on our stay amazing. there. And she's actually related to the oldest most famous sponge diver in Kalimnos. There's actually a statue in the middle of the town, Captain Antonis Kampuraki. He was kind enough to let our boys and us go aboard his boat and we had a, I had a beer with him actually. He did. And the <laughs> boys actually interviewed him for one of their homeschool lessons. Yeah. This is really Aww, cute. Thank you so much. Aww. That's so lovely. First time. He just, uh, they both like children. They like to touch everything. Don't yeah, they? of course. <laughs> That's the normal. <laughs> and, and, and the feeling That's my daughter. Of, uh, Irene, Irene is my daughter. Hello. Antonis has been scouring the seafloor for sea sponges for over 50 years now and he's very well known and famous on the island. And we also learned an interesting fact that some sponge divers actually go nude. Well, that makes absolute sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> you could be a sponge diver. I could be, but I'm not gonna be. <laughs> Leave that to answer this. So I noticed in the house was, it was all really exciting. We were so excited, weren't we? Yeah, we it was lovely to have a change. And it was like 10 minutes of exploring every room and all that kind of thing. And then suddenly it was like, what do we do now? That was it. And it just went quiet and there was, there was nothing that needed doing. Whereas on the boat, you've always got your attention occupied with something, mm. you know? Mm. So um, it was very relaxing. Really? <laughs> No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was beautiful, it was lovely, the views were amazing, we had a great time, but we are made it's for boat life. boat life, 100%, yeah. hands down. You can see in our faces, we love the ocean, we love our life, and yeah, it's good to miss it though, a bit like missing each other. That is Every true. Every now and again, you just need that little bit of distance to remind you exactly why you love it so much. The best way I can describe it is like living in a hotel apartment with a 360 degree swim up pool. And my final point was, last but not least, I feel like the ever-changing scenery, the traveling, the boat jobs, the maintenance, the changing conditions, 
all of that amounts to a lifestyle that just never gets boring. I get bored easily and it's very rare that I get bored living on this boat. Would you also say that your boat not only becomes your home and your car, but also part of your family? Definitely. Because you do love Holly, don't you? I do love Holly. She's a second girl. Okay guys, we are interested to know which life you prefer. So comment below either land life or boat life and tell us why. And tell us why. In this episode, we sail from Kalimnos to Seramos to Kos and back to Seramos. And tensions rise for us as a couple, but we like to think the sailing, the scenery, and the swimming more than make up for it. For sure. So we're going to dive straight into the episode where we're leaving Kalimnos, and I feel a little bit like a homeless vagabond. Me and Ross have just fleeced two trolleys to get all of our stuff from the car back to Holly Blue. Yeah, like a homeless person. <laughs> Got the hair for it. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time. Just enjoy the ride. Off we go. You know what are you gotta do now? What? And this? I'm filming. That's nice job. So long, Kalimnos. You have been magnificent. Give me up, so new, so I can find myself. Filming is a very important job. Like, can I remind you that, okay, give that I do all the then. talking? I'll film you taking the fenders <laughs> away. Uh, I think I just heard the kids. I think they need me. As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky. I found my way. I found my way. I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day. Cause I found my way. I found my way. Currently constructing Noah's birthday cake as we go along. We're nearly at our anchorage now and it's been a really smooth ride. Hence, ta da! Birthday boy tomorrow! So, Laura, why is it that you never do the fenders? Okay, I have this thing about being stopped from doing a task. Like, whether I'm homeschooling, baking, or working out, I don't like not finishing what I'm doing. If you ask me, you've always got something to do in the fenders. I'm a woman! A woman has always got... A woman's work is never done. Am I right or am I right? Comment below if I'm right. And also, why do you never like dropping the anchor? <sighs> Ross has just informed me that I've got to go and bloody do the anchor now. How, what, how am I supposed to do that now? Ugh. Well, it's kind of that again, and the fact that I don't really like being told what to do. <laughs> Laura expects me just to sort of stop and float around whilst we're trying to drop anchor. Is it, is it, are you asking for an argument right now? No. Because you're heading that way. Okay, all right, let's get on. Let's get on with it then. Because I found my way. Mummy, what are you doing? Trying to create Noah's birthday cake. Yeah, guys, Noah's got an Among Us cake. Noah? Yeah? How old are you going to be tomorrow then? Seven. Cool. Just get some water. Okay. We got fresh water. Pretty hot. So, guys, in the comment section below, a comment happy birthday, Noah. Oh. Apparently, Ross just caught fish. What? He didn't tell me that, let's see. Also, oh, he's the No way, he totally did. Oh, he'll be happy then. Must be a good spot. Good enough. See you in Kos. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Washing. Yeah. Ross? How's that, mate? <laughs> Out of ten? <laughs> ten. It's so good. Really? Oh. Haven't had fish in a long time. Yeah, I'm right. Happy birthday, mate. Happy birthday. But I have a little bit. I'm just, you know, touching the off. I don't know. See if it moves. At least you put uh, that one in orange for no, me. The imposter. No way. You are one seriously cool funny club. I have a brave shot. Um, um, and awesome um, boy. How is that? Smelling like 
Mm. Happy birthday, Noah. Thank you. So we're just going to raise the anchor. Laura's chilling on deck. So Cos is not far at all, it's literally just around that corner. Trust it to drop to six as soon as I stop the bloody engine. we're going along quite nicely. Quite happy with that. I wonder how fast we're going. 5.1 in seven knots of wind. I'm happy with that. So if you guys have noticed, we've had some telltales added to the mainsail. And this is the first time I've actually properly used them. I don't know if my sail trim's got any better. <laughs> I'll let you be the judge of that. I might just ease that genera out a little bit. See if that makes much difference. Okay guys, so an FAQ we get quite often is how do we get around the 90 and 180 day rule, or as they call it, the Schengen shuffle? So around this time, we actually had to sort out Holly Blue and us. Mm. So Holly Blue needed a transit log, and we had to prove our VAT status on the boat. On top of that, at the same time, we had to sort out our residency issues. We must be near Kos, because you can see all the tourist boats when we got to Kos, I have actually been there before and I was very nervous of entering the marina. It's a bit tighter, but we can do it. <laughs> the berths there are really close together. Everything is so tight. We've been very fortunate to get three nights here in the marina. Uh, it's extremely busy because now all the restrictions have lifted. Everybody's sailing again. So we've got long enough to get the biometrics done and then we are out of here. <laughs> Marineros are amazing, weren't they? And basically we didn't get it on camera, but as you reverse in, they tell you to stop and then they just turn you 90 degrees and then you just reverse into the berth. It's actually quite straightforward. Quite the professional. <laughs> So we're all tied up. Super helpful guys. Really, really nice here, aren't they? Well, that all went smoothly. I've got to say I was a little nervous. That's probably the tightest space I've put Ollie in so far. But the guys here were awesome. You could probably see they know exactly what they're doing. So all good. Right, I'm gonna go and check in. And then we're gonna celebrate the rest of Noah's birthday. Right, ready? Yep. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck for all of us. Yeah, let's get it done. There was a whole load of paperwork, loads of backwards and forwards to the offices, wasn't there? The Greeks like their paperwork. Really feeling for Ross today, guys. He has just done so much preparation for this biometric card. The amount of paperwork that we have had to gather together to make this happen. We're actually at the police station. Probably can't vlog. As we have joined Daddy C, looking a bit stressed, 
to sort out the rest of our biometric application. The appointments and places that we've had to go to has required a lot of navigation, probably more so than sailing. He needs a man when you've got sons. <laughs> I got you flowers not too long ago. Only because you're apologizing. We always find if there's something going on behind the scenes, like one of us has got a problem with something or extra stress on one of our shoulders or both our shoulders, little things bother us more than they usually do. And it is funny looking back on the edit because we were actually in cost for three days and I've got about 30 seconds of footage. Oh, <laughs> partly because we were so busy and partly because we were in a really bad mood the whole time. Yeah, but... We did it! <laughs> Finally! Biometric card Tip. done. Right, let's go say things. <laughs> Just a gust. Give you a gust in a minute. Once we basically left Kos and started sailing again, everything was much better. Cruisy. Yeah. In was fact, it? that was an epic sail. We've got a huge ship trying to overtake us. That is going to get really, really close. Are we all right, Ross? We've got right away, we're sailing. Okay. I can't go any more this way, upwind. We're close hauled. Why the rush? That's close, isn't it? That's very close. <laughs> We've got a problem with the chair and it won't come in so fast. It's having to manually do it. Trapped. He's done it. I knew something was going to happen today. I just knew it. And I had a feeling it was going to be a line that was going to get jammed. Maybe I made it happen. <gasps> I think my worry caused bad vibes in the boat. Nearly there now. Can't wait to go spearfishing. Laura's just apologising to the kids for being a bit of a stress head. Seramos is a beautiful island, but the anchorage that we were in on the south is quite secluded. It's out on a limb, there's not, there's nothing there at all. Perfect for skinny dipping mm -hmm. and just being completely alone, but there was not even a place to get a beer. Oh, terrible. <laughs> so we couldn't <laughs> stay there for too long. So it's been, I think, three days now of relentless winds. To be honest, we're all just a bit fed up with it. We'd like a break. Uh, and I think we're all going a bit bonkers, or should I say, me and Ross are going a bit bonkers. <laughs> the boys are absolutely fine, actually. It's really weird how environmental factors don't really seem to bother them too much. But when we feel a bit trapped on the boat, we start to go a bit potty. Up you go. So we've decided that today we're gonna get to shore. There's a two and a half kilometre hike up the big hill and over to the village, over the other side. Oh, if you don't know where Pikachu is, he just got one to the, to the back of Daddy's bag. Okay, Pikachu is present. Nearly there now, so at least halfway. Laura and Josh are lagging behind. Me and Noah got a bit of a flow on the go, didn't we? All right, you lead the way, mate. We are really far from Holly right now. Really far. gorgeous place there's a lovely little port there and it's a very quaint little village but it's quite a hike up and over the hill to get down to it so i would advise it's not for the faint-hearted beautiful you can i've got your swimming shorts exactly what we needed <laughs> Happy you. Happy you. If you ever want to get a man up a hill, give him two pints of alpha and a heroes, and he'll do anything. 
nude swim off the back of the boat, pronto. Ross decided he wanted to move the boat at one point when we were in this really lovely spot. <laughs> and I went over and checked out the anchorage before he moved it. To be honest, guys, I really like it where we are anyway. I love the white sand beaches and the whole bay feels a little bit like a big swimming pool. So you feel really, really safe. Um, and for me, that's always a big factor. This is the going to the rocks gear that I've chosen. Got a very long, strong line here. Sorry, boss, but you're not going to get your wilderness life this time. This is going to be our lazy line to help pick up the ropes. I'm going to set them up first and then just pick them up like a lazy line. So she's coming back now. I said, I don't want to move. I like it when we are, but... Well, Ross has gone to set the lines up. I don't know why he bothered to send me over there. <laughs> because we're going there anyway. Well, I looked at the weather forecast and it was going to get very windy. So I thought it was going to be safer. The thing about sailing life is if you are a person that likes consistency, which generally I am, you just kind of have to suck it up really because change happens all the time. Whether you're happy where you are or not, circumstances which affect your safety are obviously more important to deal with. So we are moving. I've stamped my feet a little bit, but had to listen to the captain, so we moved the boat. <laughs> okay. Happy? I forgive you now. Where are you going? There are some that hits me nowhere. Bye. Bye. Here comes trouble. That's a quick swim. So, um, on camera then, how is it here? It'll do. Was I right? I'll never admit that on camera. Never, never but, think that being tied to rocks is safer than swinging around on an anchor. You'll never guess where we are. In the end, we dragged and ended up having to move back to where we were in the first place. Right back where we started this morning. Oh my goodness, I'm so ready to leave the Meltimi now. They are the predominant winds here in Greece and they funnel down through the middle of the islands through the summer months of, I think it's May until October. And they generally last for days and days and days. And obviously they make for quite rough conditions and they can really pick up and become very strong. The one blessing about it is that it's very cooling so you don't get too hot. But we've been in it for two seasons now and to be honest with you, I think we're just really weary because it's very tiring being in the Maltimi. You're constantly upping anchor, resetting anchor, changing where you're going, like constantly moving your sail plan around based on the winds. So we're really looking forward to hopefully heading over to a part of Greece that maybe will have a bit of a less windy summer this year and just kind of having a mental break from it. Which would be nice. You two are right, aren't you? Yeah. Draw a picture, blissfully unaware. <laughs> Drink? Yeah. <laughs> in this episode, we sail to Cardamina in Kos where I have a little surprise in store for everyone. And then we head inland to explore what this beautiful island has to offer. You know life's too short, so let's not waste another minute. Hey, it's all right now. Listen to such a beautiful sound.
that we're gonna have a little bit of a break on land from the stuffy hot port and we're gonna go somewhere really cool to check out in course that's particularly special kind of sailing related and will be a whole different experience to anything we've ever done before so i'm really excited for that and that's coming up in a day or two so stay tuned for that part of the episode Lip slap slop, as they say. What? I think you're all set, mate. Right, go and cool off then. Or is it hot? I'm going in, Josh. I'm going in. I'm trying to sneak up on you. Daddy's been editing all morning. Hello. He's only just got here. Oh, oh. Where's Josh going? Oh, Josh, Josh is made some friends. So what did you like about Cardemina? Well, if you need a break from the Maltini, it's the perfect little oasis. It's got fantastic shelter. You can do so many things as a family. There's safe beaches, there's restaurants. It's also from the boat point of view, very sheltered there from the Maltini. It's quite shallow going into the port, but once you're in, you feel safe and secure. There's lots of nice bars nearby which sell Guinness. Mm. <laughs> there goes Tarzan. How's he doing, now? It's like a monkey. You are a monkey. Ross is doing my hair. I don't need a hairdresser. You actually look like one as well, Ross. Thanks. Got that long head. I would like you for a hairdresser any day. What hairdresser? Right, you ready, buddy? Yep. Let's go. Who's gonna make it? Oh! This is a combination of heaven and hell, all at the same time. <laughs> no, we're getting off it. Get off it now. Okay, there's actually smoking. Oh, I was not expecting that. Abort mission. Josh is giving Noah a lift home. Oh, well, that was an adrenaline rush. What do you reckon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know who got more out of that than we're us. <laughs> I changed the habit of a lifetime. Ross has gone the wrong way. We're here. Sales and Poss is a luxury glamping eco village and it's set in the foothills of the mountains in Koss. What's glamping? Glamping is luxury camping. Oh, okay. So it's camping without having to put your own tent up, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Sales and Koss is glamping with a difference. The EK tents are just perfect. They're just the right size. You've got a lovely living area. We had two bedrooms. The boys had more space than they knew what to do with. And a bathroom. Everything you could hope for from a holiday home, let alone a tent. And you liked the beds, didn't you? I did like the beds. Coffee bed. Does it rock? Oh. One of those that you can just sink into. Actually, having enough space to do a starfish, which never happens in our boat. No. Our boat 
Our, our bed's cosy. Our bed is super cosy and it keeps us close as a couple because we literally have no, no choice, choice to be close. <laughs> right. See you all later. <laughs> We had our own garden so we could eat al fresco, enjoy the mountain views and just generally be part of nature but with a little bit of luxury. What happened to all the food? Demolish. There's lots of areas to relax. Even the kids were more relaxed. He, he loves nature. I think he's in his own room. Back to bed, Josh. I am not. I don't know what we're up to. Canberra. He's on security towns. Just got to see what that <laughs> security can. Right, boys. How are the beds? They're amazing. Where are the pillows gone? Don't you dare. <laughs> What's going on here? We've been invaded by soft toys. They're just sleeping here. I put they ain't sleeping there. Well, I put them to sleep. They're not sleeping here. I'm They're not. Yes, they are. Where am I going to sleep? And you are going to sleep in there. Uh, obviously. When it's morning, I'll put everything back to the way it was. Swim. Hey. Yeah. We go for a swim. Well, I'm not. They are, and they're gonna. We're gonna have breakfast. So. Once you're gonna get changed, I really want you to get changed. But after this, look this. I'm changed. I'm dressed. Let's go. So they do an early breakfast, which is cool. Hey. There's not many swimming pools that you can get in at seven o'clock in the morning and be toasty. <laughs> Lovely. And they're doing breakfast already. Mm. Good for us. Always up at the crack of dawn. Wow, that is what a heck of a menu. Everything is like a buffet style, but they do it from the kitchen. And vegetables are sourced locally here at Sales and Costs. And they're doing special today Nutella pancake. So win-win mm. for Noah. All right, sit down, guys. Have a pastry. What's with cutting grapes then, Noah? Right. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, look at Noah's pancakes. He's going to love that. Cheers. That's good, Josh. I even got Swiss cheese. Yummy. What do you reckon, Noah? It's good. Daddy got a treat for you here. Oh, thank you. Now it's just letting this food go down. Is it comfortable? Yeah. That was an epic breakfast. Would you agree? Amazing. Yeah. And we are now on our way to Zia. What does it remind you of? It's a bit like the Alps, isn't it? 
Oh, out yeah. on the ocean. Definitely. Very green and lush. Mountainous, obviously. As you can see, the roads are a little bit wobbly. <laughs> We're a bit all over the place, aren't we? We have heard though that it gets pretty busy at sunset here in Zia. So I probably go for morning unless you're gonna book it for dinner. Home. Noah, it's a park. Nice little place to get an ice cream. There's actually a whole place of water here. Where's it come from? Well, it can't, well, it comes from somewhere. I just have a sound of it. The ice cream shop sells beer. Laura, they sell beer. They do. <gasps> oh, well done. One thing though. It's got to be an alpha. So we've just been looking over the islands over here, all the islands we've sailed so far this year. Mm. And we had all these plans to go to the Ionian, Peloponnese, and this whole residency thing. Um, Slowed us down. It's taken us so long. We're now thinking, why not just go with the wind? If you're trying to get from the Dodecanese over to the Ionian or basically anywhere west of Greece, then you need to do it early. Yeah. Trying to get across in the height of Maltimi season is just, well, if you're brave, go for it. Uh, but if you've got a family of four like us and some of us don't like rough seas, then perhaps be careful and time it right. I would recommend planning a route like that, either in the spring or the autumn. Mm. Which works fine for me, I'm quite happy with that. So we're now thinking about completely changing it up. Answers in the comment section below, have a guess. I was going to tell you, but it looks like we're leaving a mystery. No, I think we should keep it a surprise for everyone. There's a clue. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey Josh, how's the view up there? <laughs> Zia reminds me a little bit of the Alps. It's very alpine and so green for Greece. I know, you would never think that a Greek island that is so hot could be so luscious. And it really is. Kos is a surprising island and not just the holiday makey, booze cruisy. 18 to 30s holiday that people think it is it has so much more to offer oh than that. definitely costas i've heard has changed over the years as well oh it has and i think over recent times it, it's become much more family orientated mm. so um yeah definitely highly recommend it so i think laura's overdone it a little bit she's hungry so we're going to go back to the campsite laura's going to get some food or we're all going to get some food and then the boys cook for a swim yeah come on Noah, let's go swimming We've got homemade falafels with a beetroot and carrot salad and beetroot mayonnaise and tahini mayo. Blimey. That is food porn. Can I have some, some of those chefs, Daddy? <laughs> Standard. Look at that. What do you reckon? Good. Happy Josh. You were hungry, weren't you? That's a good sign. It's really good. <laughs> really like nice spices and things like that. Mm, really special. Um, I think if you're here, why would you go anywhere else, honestly? So despite not really wanting to go anywhere else, we have gone other places. As you've seen, 
and explored, had adventures, but honestly, sales and costs. If you did just want to go on holiday and not go anywhere else. And just relax. Yeah, like if you wanted to relax, definitely. It's impossible not to relax. Anymore. It really is. Um, and Laura I've been doesn't relax. fighting it <laughs> yeah. the whole time, but it's forced me into relaxing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go back to Holly Blue. All Zen. A new woman. Yeah, and then I'm going to get knackered again. <laughs> totally forgotten the name of the place that we're going but I do know that it's really well protected and in a nice little bay so we're just gonna have a couple of days of anchor life and get back on the ocean so we can just jump with the sea every five minutes in this crazy heat. We have one and another fan somewhere blasting us all the time in the port so it's time to reduce our electrical consumption and just get back to nature a little bit I think. Engines on, kids are fed. Let's go. When the heat gets too hard to handle, and you know you're about to get it, and you can reach much higher now. Right, boys? Yeah. yeah. Ready for Kamari? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. What do you reckon, Ross? It'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Goals. Can't believe how shallow it is, even here. I hope I'm out far enough. Freaks me out when you can see the seafloor. 10 meters deep. Look at all that sand. So we're on our way to Kamari. We've really enjoyed our time in Cardamina. It's been really nice, sort of having our creature comforts, some more English cuisine. Blimey. That is food porn. Can I have some, some of those chips, Daddy? <laughs> Standard. Kids have loved it. Never seen them so happy. But it's time to get back on Anchor Life and remember the other reason why we're doing this. Whilst we were in the port, we managed to score some free electric. So we've had fans going, all the fridges on, and overnight, I think there was a power cut. <laughs> we broke up with fairly flat batteries, which is quite funny. So I'm not too worried that there's no wind today because we need to charge the batteries up. I'm really enjoying this motor and the scenery is just stunning. This whole coast is beautiful. These guys are just doing some homeschooling on their doodle laps. We've been using doodle learning now for about six to eight months, something like that. And not paid, not sponsored, nothing like that. We honestly just rate it very highly as an additional learning tool for homeschool. So obviously the boys get one-to-one -one learning with myself and Ross, but they also get online learning with doodling which means that it's sort of supplementing their everyday learning and at times like these when we're sailing a lot it just keeps their minds alive to do something online so yeah highly recommend to all parents out there who are homeschooling or maybe if you have a child that needs to just gap fill maths english spelling or tables then doodling will be brilliant for them I love how you can see the wind coming before it happens. Just got Laura to start the hatch. You all right, guys? Yeah. You want to come out? Yeah, get mummy to put your life jacket on. You can come out. Three, two, one, ta-da! This is so cool. <laughs> Wow, that was easy. <laughs> Wasted money on cures. Forgot how to fix myself. They say that time is free. Then why is it so precious? Oh, I'll say. Is 
Warte. Nein, ist doch was. Is it nice having that bloody engine off? Well, I know you like sailing, but it doesn't make for very comfortable baking conditions. <laughs> all right, we've got a lane going on. Just a little bit. <laughs> you boys all right? Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, all right. Should be there in about half an hour, roughly. If you go a bit faster, that'd be nice, thank you. Well, careful what you wish for. So, Laura, we all know you like a, a nice car motor because you can do all your jobs. But tell us honestly, what's been better? The first half motoring or the second half sailing? It's dependent on conditions. Okay, let's get this straight. It's not sailing I don't like, it's waves I don't like. So when we were motoring, we were bumping all over the place and very uncomfortable. And the engine's noisy. Yeah, now we're like cutting through the water and it is really peaceful. I'm on a, like, a bit of a lean, but yeah, obviously saying it's better. Yes, we've got it on camera, that's all I wanted. <laughs> I'll have to store that somewhere safe for when I need it. Upside down, peach cakes, all baked under sail. Just got our hammock, tied it up on the genoa, put some more weights here and here. Bit of a genius move, I think you'll agree. We have an amazing down draft, yes. Pastries. Mm -hmm. Okay. See you later. See you later. I see that you see through your emotion that the stars align. The way you've been staring at me wakes me up like the sun. I don't, I don't wanna cut you off. I know, I know. Ready, ready to rock. Let's go. This is such a rush. Like this game is so bittersweet. I feel alive, it's so hard to breathe. Will it be over if you got what you need? Go on then, jump in. He's gonna climb it. Let's go his mask on. Oh, that's one way of doing it. <laughs> that was funny. actually giving me vertigo <laughs> it's so clear like I feel that I'm really high up has anyone else ever experienced that what were they going to do with that they were hunting either swordfish or tuna using a spear gun and fenders but like a harpoon oh this is our new way of starting the tender it's in gear with a spanner Put it into neutral. That's good. 
That's going to work real well when we need it to start when we're in rough sea. Don't go about him. About who? Oh, do I, I, I did it too good. He's right there. He's just camouflaged because of his top. What are you doing with that? Yeah. He's using a spanner to put it in gear. Comment below if you think we need a new tender. It's fine to you leave the spanner. Ready? Yeah. Right, gonna go and find a Sunday roast or a pool oh, bar. That's what we were doing. We might be. Oh no, I've done it now, haven't I? We're having a Sunday, you right now? Yep. What have you got with you? Pikachu. I can hear something going off in my bag and I, I've just realised what it is. I keep hearing these ship sirens. I forgot to turn the anchor alarm off my mobile. So it's going crazy because it thinks Holly Blue is on the beach. At least we know it works. Yeah, at least we know it works. Yeah. yeah! Laura's keen to get there. I'm going to give you one guess why. You need a wee. <laughs> so I just crossed your legs. It's very rare for the wind to be blowing from the south. Obviously, normally it's pretty strong from the north, the Meltimi. Um, we thought about moving this morning, but I think it's going to pass. So, thought we'll go to the pub instead. Laura, do you know what that island's called? Ayo Stefanos. Not Ayo Stefanos Beach. Up there. It's quite a nice island. I like the rock structure. And it's got a little church, which Laura always likes. You can anchor there. Yeah, I thought about it. I took the tender over there, actually, to try and sort the engine out. And it's yeah. very touristy. Oh, it's it's me, almost it like it belongs to the hotel, if you ask me. Why do I not believe that you took the tender over there to fix it? I have to warm the engine up. Ah, oh, okay, I'll let you off. I don't just make these things up, you know. You weren't looking for beer on draft then? No. Okay. See if we're allowed in. You can do the asking. Okay. I'll hide behind the bushes. We're allowed in. They even let us in. Unbelievable. I think they're keen to get in the pool. And they sell alpha. Win win. Something's in the I thought you'd want to be in the shade. Wait, I'm getting spot by that pool. Oh yeah. This is gorgeous. The boys are just getting changed. Yeah. I'll be over in a minute. I can stay here all day. And there's light in every room. Now there's a sunscreen. You want Noah? Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Come on then, jump in. Oh. Hey mummy. I, I did do some filming of Daddy and now you can take over. You're going in. So a bit of good news. We haven't seen any family now for like a couple of years due to everything going on in the world. Won't bore you of that one. But um, we have just booked some flights for Laura's mum to come out and visit us in Rhodes. We're now making a little plan for a nice little holiday for a week for her. And I think Laura is really excited. Uh, one, to show her, like in real life, this kind of way of life. But also, obviously she hasn't seen her for two years and she is close to her mum. And I think it will be good for both of them. So I'm really, really pleased. And obviously I, obviously I want her there as well. My parents are also going to be coming out about a month later, so middle of September, I would say. This year is definitely a time for reconnecting with family. And yeah, I think probably a lot of people are feeling like that right now. Yeah, I think we're coming out the other side of this and some good times to be had very soon. Kids out. Very good. That's number one. Ready, go?
Go sailing. Me and Noah have been up for a little while actually. Laura and Josh have been sleepy heads and taking a very long time to wake up. Good up. Oh, look who's risen. Hello. Do you have a good sleep? I did. Good. I got a picture of the kids. Oh, he's done that for you, Josh. He's been up ages. Been waiting for you to wake up. Right, I got stuff to do. Nice day. Seems to have a lot to get ready this morning. Gotta put all this away. <laughs> On. She's risen from the dead. I'll go to the shop for 10 minutes. Okay, I'll be longer. <laughs> I haven't had coffee yet. That's oh, right, I've got a while. You've got about half an hour probably. Phew. I shouldn't have said that. She'll be longer now. She shouldn't have let me lie in. That's what happens when I lie in. She's catching some morning vibes before we finally leave. Oh. I love it. So we've just left the harbour, just got all the fenders away, the tender up on the damage frame. The wind is 26 to 30 at the minute. I don't know if it's just gusty here. That's not even out there yet. No, I know. This is not what was predicted. No. We've um, lost our space. Someone in our space? Yeah. Well, this is one of those moments where it's making a call, isn't it? Yeah. So we can either go over to Kefalos, it's very windy there, but there's been no waves. Right. And it's a good anchorage. Yeah. Or we could try yeah, it. There's Nisseros, if there's a space. Mm. And Tilos, well, we'll be in the thick of it by then, so. The main reason for us going today was because we wanted to just go back out and anchor. So I think personally, that's what we should be doing. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, it's just that same old thing. The weather isn't doing what we're supposed to be doing, but it might just be the hills doing this, if we go a mile or two out, it might calm down. So I think um, we'll get the sails out, start heading out a bit, and if it is starting to get mad, we'll cut in that way. Over to Kepalos. All right, you're the captain. We've been doing three knots without any sails out. It's quite funny. Okay, so we're flying along got the Genera out and actually it's quite a nice following to see isn't it? I think you must have been right you know, I reckon it was windfall off the mountains. I think it's windfall off the mountains but uh, to be honest I have been a little bit stressed this morning because the wind is picking up later and I wanted to be gone by seven, it's now half nine so I don't think we're going to make it to Halki, we'll probably have to go to Tilos. Okay that's fine by me, we'll just like cut the journey a little bit short yeah. and um, can I are you hungry? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were. And I'm thirsty. <laughs> Usually, if he's a bit stressed out, <laughs> it's, it's the tummy rumbling. Maybe. Uh, the way to a man's heart, as they say, is through his belly. And the way to his stress levels too, by the looks of it. <laughs> right, I'll go make breakfast. I'm really happy. Like, I feel like the sea is pushing us along really nicely at the moment. Bacon and egg sandwich can sort that out. Thank you. She's good, isn't she? It's a really odd wind today. We're going along at about five knots 
the wind meter is saying we've only got one knot of wind. So there's either something wrong with that or the wind is very low. It's like lower than the mast. Yeah. Didn't you use a drone down the side of a volcano? I did. You remember? Yeah, that was like two seasons ago. I know. Amazing. Stone and feather move outside your head. Now brings back memories. Well, the boys are really happy. They're all set up with their online schooling. So the motion is pretty good for them. I think I might even be able to squeeze a workout in today. Maybe the captain will as well. <laughs> but, uh, I didn't tell you about what happened to me. I know I'm back. What happened? <sighs> Classic case of society when it's going too fast, is what I'd like to say. I went shopping and I had a lot of stuff to carry. And the lady at the till, I'm not kidding you, she looked at me and spoke to me like I'd offended her mum or something. She really? Was, yeah, she was that rude to me, just so, like she just really didn't like me for no reason. And she whizzed my stuff through the till. And then when I got to the end, I was obviously clearly struggling to pack. She chucked me a couple of bags when I needed about five. And then halfway through by packing, she said, can you hurry up please? Because the lady next to you was trying to. No way. Yeah, and the lady next to me was like really chilled and she just didn't even seem bothered. Like there was no rush, but it's a mm. classic example of in this modern day and these modern times when there's so many people and everybody's got so much going on in their heads that they're literally rushing for no reason that they forget to just be kind. Mm. And like appreciate what's right in front of them. Like, I, I could have been someone that, if she got to know me, could have become her best friend. But instead, she just created a really bad vibe. Oh. And, and I left the shop feeling like- A bit deflated. Deflated and really like worthless, actually. And then so, you come back to a grumpy captain because I'm rushing around <laughs> yeah, everywhere trying to go. Know, you've got reasons for that and we know each other well and you speak to me with respect the majority of the time. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to highlight that point because number one, it shows how when you slow life down like we have with the simple life and sailing, you really appreciate everyone and everything around you because you're able to breathe enough and take a moment to be mindful with people because you slow your life down. You never know what's going on in someone's day. There's other people out there who aren't in such a good place, who could be having a terrible time of it who could have family members who are not well or just like maybe be really depressed and that lady could have really had a negative impact on their day so what I'm where I'm going with this is be mindful and be kind and if you can smile at someone do it anyway this is lovely glad to be back out here you check the horizon for me there's not a lot going on on that you asleep again nope we got time on our side We're in a state of hope I need you on my fire I want you to know That every time you're away I long for you so much I can find my way We got everything here At least to stay alive So the good thing about this preventer line is right now stops the mainsail from taking my head off.
Okay, I'm gonna be straight with you. Tilos is not the best place for anchoring. So I decided to try and find some stern two options up the coast. There were plenty of rocks to tie to, but finding a good spot for the anchor? Nuts are good. So we decided to leave Holly Blue exactly where she was. Daddy's had an idea. Oh, you put Ali over there in the Put middle. The rope on there. Yeah, we keep jumping on her. Flying lessons, can't we? <laughs> flying lessons? Normal service has resumed. <laughs> Due to the high wind forecast, the port police told all boats to either leave or head into the port. We have nowhere to go. I really don't even understand why we can't just stay where we are. Here he comes. Apparently he's got a plan. It was chaos to say the least, but I ended up helping all the boats with their lines before bringing Holly Blue in. So we will go in then you. <laughs> no then we can cool down. Yeah. <laughs> no repeats of yesterday, please. Isn't it? I wasn't going to do this, but um, I'm going to take a shortcut and go in between these two rocks. Look at this, guys. So Laura wants to go on swinging anchor, so we're going to try the anchor around the corner. It's a close walk into town from there anyway, so we're going to go and check it out now. We're still not sure what we're doing. It's not like us, is it? I love it. We're over in heaven here, and these two are scraping the walls. Sussing out the rocks. Just gonna take a walk into town. It's a phase. But either way, you show me how to reach for the best of myself. It's all good. How is it? It's okay, I haven't tried it. Looks pretty good though. It looks good. These boys have got a Heros portion that we've shared between them. And I've got, I don't even know what this is. Right. Wow. <laughs> Check that out. Life, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Josh and Noah have just hijacked another boat. <laughs> Man overboard! They make friends everywhere, don't they? The fact that I can reach for the best of myself. It's all.
This is breathtaking. If you've ever been to the Amalfi Coast in Italy, you'll know exactly what I mean. We actually did that in a camper van when Josh was two years old. Good times. So it's always good to be prepared in advance. We're at anchor right now. I've got the paddleboard and the canoe up, only loosely tied because we're not going very far. We might still go to the port, so I've got the lines ready for the port. And if we do go there, we'll get the fenders out quickly, which Laura can do today. But I think stern two to the rocks is favorite. So we've got two long lines ready. I like to use chains around the rocks because even these tough old straps are starting to wear on the rocks. So chain is definitely best. Got a whole series of shackles and pliers to tighten them up. I like to dive the anchor just to check it's in well, because that is the most important part. And then to buy myself a bit of time, because we are a bit short-handed, I've got a stern anchor ready. That's 12 kilos, 10 meters of chain, 20 meters of heavy rope, all tied to the stern cleat. So the idea is we back up towards the rocks as close as I dare drop that one in and then that buys us some time to get the other stern lines put up to the rocks so there's no panic or no rush. Thank you. How did the anchor come up? Was it buried hard or was it not too bad? Actually, not too bad. Really? It's fine sand, isn't it? Yeah. It was very deep, like it's always facing the wrong way. Whenever I bring the anchor, <laughs> you do. Always facing up. But you managed to do it on your own. You, I didn't have to come up. I know because I think it, I think the anchor has started to like me. Oh yeah. I I, I always thought I'd, you know when you just think the anchor <laughs> doesn't like me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it seems to be I'm growing on it. <laughs> right, let's go to town. Laura's left the drawer open. All right, Noah. All good? Yeah. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. So, do you think we should go left or right of that fishing boat? There, on the left of the boat, because then we can swim to shore there and easily get up onto the main road. This is the swimming pool, Noah. The sea? Well, yeah, look at it. Got our own little swimming pool. You tricked me. No, I didn't. It's super safe. Look at this as well. All the way along here, you've got little ladders coming out. Come on, let's go for a swim together. We're just sorting out our second rock to tie against. The ladder. Get the ladder down. Now it's a swimming pool. Oh, Okay, now I can't get down with you now. Okay, help me down then. Woo! I got you! What do you think of the pinnacle then? It's so hot! I got you weird! <laughs> Go on. You know you want to. Yum. This is the owner now. Nice to meet you. Yes, ass. It always seems to follow us around. So do I just do nothing and go home or do I help them all out? 
We got there eventually. Couldn't wait for me. Hello, taxi. Where have you been? Trying to help. Trying to be the hero again. No, just trying to help. So we've got two anchors out. I forgot if I showed you earlier. That's um, a 50 meter rope there as well. So we're all good there. And two very good anchor points to the shore. All that looks okay. Taxi driver is a bit hot, but she looks like she's about to cool down. Where are you going? Like. You got a ticket hanging up there. Do so you need to ask where I've been wanting to go for the last two hours? Oh, that's why you stomped off. They had kids on that other boat. I felt like someone who may have a little bit of an idea should be there. All right, I'm going. How long are you going for? As long as I need. See you then. It's to be better. Good. I was up at two in the morning doing editing till about five and then I wanted to go back to bed again which is a bit silly but you guys have been awesome let me have a lion do you know what woke me up a fly can you believe that a fly tried to climb up my nose and that woke me up how ironic where are you going bye oh okay bye there goes my breakfast I'm going <laughs> You're going for a swim, are you? Oh, yeah, it's so hot that I need to get in. Okay. Luckily, we live on the ocean. Sorry, guys. Um, if that was planned, I would have turned the engine off first. But I'm going to turn it off now. I was deep into editing. Editing, editing, editing. Because of all the fires in Turkey, there's been a lot of smoke and smog in the sky, and our solar hasn't been working like it normally does. And unfortunately, we're having to run the engine for half an hour to an hour, just so the batteries stay above 12 and a half volts. It's 41 knots outside. Luckily, we're tied to the rocks. These poor guys are getting smashed. Here comes another one there. The holiday makers are not wanting them to go to the rocks. I think that's the Coast Guard lure. Yeah, I hope they don't want us to move. <laughs> like till off. Hashtag. It's all going off. They're not happy. Tell you what to do it. The thing is, the space at the port, there's the space of two boats at the port still. Just right. They can just go alongside on here. They're not going to make it to do. No worries. If anything, we have picked a really good spot. Whoa! Oh, he's, to us. he's gathering them up, taking them to the port, to two spaces, does make sense. We've been watching these guys for an hour now, and I think their anchor is well and truly stuck. And to top it off, the Coast Guard are going mad, and there's a big ferry coming in just as we speak. The final episode of season three. I'm going to take you through a few months of the remainder of our season that set us back both emotionally and sent us sideways. Quite a few of you have been commenting to ask us where we are and what time of year it is and when our next episode is going live. We do appreciate that the uploads have slowed down in the last few months. So today I'm here to fill in the blanks and explain exactly what's been going on. And also to hopefully show you that not all storms in life come to sink you. Some of them come to set you free. Left off 
off on the beautiful island of Hauke. Why do ferries always go past at the worst moments? Never a dull moment. It's cross anchors. Those guys over there. We're only actually supposed to be here for 10 minutes just to fill up with water. <sighs> Drama. So what Ross is gonna do is go over to the anchor chain there. He's gonna attach a rope to our anchor. They are gonna pull their chain up and then we're gonna drop our anchor back down um, afterwards. Ross is diving down with an ear infection and he can't dive at the moment. So he's got a burst eardrum. Poor guy. The plasticine is in. And the back of the boat is flipping, touching the quayside. Cheapest washing machine in the world. All you've got to do is feed it at regular intervals. Hi, Hauke. Thanks for first, mate. That's a bit of a mission to get going. Passage, we finally rocked up a roads town where we dropped the anchor overnight and we were greeted with some pretty interesting sights. Thank you. Just fit with the sails. Morning guys. We had a great night's sleep. Boat's still here. We shouldn't it would be because the holding here is really good. It's all just sand. Excuse the throat. My ear infection has now gone to my throat as well. And the whole family have now got a cold. So uh, apologies if our performance is a little low, if the camera's a bit wonky. And we're not even going to get Ali off the back of the boat today because we are going to go straight to Falaraki where there are quite a few supermarkets to reprovision. And I've promised the kids a McDonald's. We haven't had one of those in a couple of years at least and they're very excited about it. <laughs> so we're gonna up anchor and get going. Got a nice bit of wind today. I haven't had wind like this for ages. Late teams, perfect. Zipping along. This is awesome. I said I want to come over here with my life jacket on. Go on then, it's down there. Go and put it on. Josh is picking his first ever bacon sandwich. Oh, cool. <laughs> What's up? I have cut my first leg, but it just went over the table, so we had to clean it up. Standard. I just gave him the egg and said crack it. Crack it. No, uh, you can put that on down there, please. Right. Put it on down there. Okay. That's not on. Yeah, but I can't get that right. Right, clip that down there then. And he picks the other side. That's the exact opposite. Thank you. Come here then. Uh, where are we going? Valaraki. Oh. I better check the depth. I think we're all right. 72 meters. Looks pretty good. I've come a bit wider because we're sailing. Why is that? I'm actually enjoying it. You're enjoying it? Oh, yeah. good. So this is Falaraki Beach, and we're gonna go and check it out. There's not a lot of information about anchoring though, so we're gonna have to just suck it and see what we can find. Well done. Just pull it a bit harder. There you go, hold that tight. You got it? And put the brake on. Done. Well done. High five. Woo. 
So we've just dropped anchor. I'm gonna stay here for a couple of hours. I'm not sure what Laura wants to do, but we might as well go and check out a bit of Falaraki while we're here. This led to a last minute pit stop where we decided we'd get some food. What's this, Noah? Bit of shopping, walk around and have a nice cool off under the showers. Have you ever seen prices like this? A slice of watermelon, three euros. That's quite a whole watermelon for that. Not if the slice is the size of a house. <laughs> I'm okay. joking. I don't think I know a watermelon is that big. No, I'm really joking. Back to the boat. Skinny dipping at 12 o'clock. Enough of that land stuff. <laughs> right, I've got to get Ali out of the water and we're going to go. Okay. Let's go. we decided to up the hook and head down to our final destination which was Lindos Bay and Rhodes. Laura's getting too hot. Let's see if we can catch a big one. This brings back really fond memories for us. Oh that's actually creeped me out. <laughs> There's no sharks in the mode is there? <laughs> in our I think it was our first season we visited Rhodes and had the most amazing time so it was really cool to be back in familiar territory. So good to be back. You gonna check the anchor then? Yeah, okay, I will. Cannibal! Our time in Lindos was spent reacquainting ourselves with familiar sights. Cave number two. Underwater fun, cliff jumping, making new friends. Jeff just made a friend. A friend with a toy. And he's off. He's amazing. Three, two, one, one, go! Now his ass is out. You have to censor that. And also enjoying the flood lighting that our neighbouring super yachts provided. He is actually better than you, Laura. He is better than you. Seven. <laughs> I come home from work, bring in some friends. Wide such a bang, make you up tight and tense. You're high strong, baby. Those guys were really kind, and their chefs even sent us over some really lovely food. And Ross got to try wasabi for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's wasabi. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> It's the following day after the sushi fest that we had last night and the guys have been over from next door again and this time they brought fish. <laughs> I don't know what it is, what do you it. think it is? I think it's bream and sea bass. It's barbecued isn't it? Dinner is served. Again, best bit. This is a feast. <laughs> Finally it was time to welcome a very special guest on board. It's a gorgeous morning. And this morning is an extra special morning. We've got a special visitor coming! She's a she. As you may or may not know, when I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia three years ago now, Ross was sailing across the Bay of Biscay and I was extremely poorly. I was hospitalised for a couple of weeks. It was a very scary time and I was very poorly for probably about five weeks afterwards and I had to absolutely fight with everything I had to get to health and to be able to be in a good place, to be able to live on Holly Blue and live our dream. And she is one of the people who was incredibly important in that process. So we all got ready and we went to the airport. Go on then boys. To pick up my mum. It was wonderful having my mum around to show her what live award life is like. Your room is in there. Oh, look how tidy it is. And to experience the joy of sailing. She even got to experience some new activities, which I don't think she was expecting. Get quick, I'm upside down. Okay, I'm coming. See you later. Bye. 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 
Right, Mum, <laughs> should we go and conquer the Acropolis? Of course, let's do it. Eyes up, your side down. to wave mum a very sad goodbye and it was time to crack on with our day-to-day -day liveaboard life. It was around a week after mum left that I just started to feel a bit different. There's something different about you. I've got a very, very little teeny tiny surprise for you. And when I see you ready, Cinto, you've got a pop and it's as many blues as you can. Three. If I wrote you if I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem, if I posted a letter. That is so amazing. But how come that I don't see anything? Because I got we've got to wait a few months to get in there now. What are you doing? Yeah. You're in a little baby in the cinema. We're having a baby. <laughs> Is it maybe because I never knew quite where I was and suddenly you told me maybe you're lost but I am too whatever Sadly, at 13 weeks, we did lose the pregnancy. So I'm gonna really try not to get too upset. If I told you that I don't know where I'm going, don't know what to say, but I go without knowing. If I told you that I don't know what to believe in Don't know how to pray But I pray anyway Good morning guys It's 6am and we've got up really early because Ross has been entertaining <laughs> I've been up since 4 and he got up for me anyway I've just got up and we're about to do something because we literally have about half an hour before the boys are awake Recently I've been in a bit of a bad mood Um, a bit more than normal <laughs> So we're about to find out if there's a good reason for it Or if I actually really don't like Ross anymore <laughs> Really? Seriously? I'm absolutely shaking <laughs> Done? So that's what you wanted, with it? Is it what you wanted? I'm easy. <laughs> Still just sort of taking it all in, really. Feeling very calm. It's a beautiful day. I'm not going to forget this one. So now we've got the kids out of the way, how do you feel about it? I actually, honestly, feel pretty good about it. We have talked about this before, and I've been very anxious about the whole pregnancy thing because it doesn't tend to go smoothly for us, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. But um, we could fast forward in time and it all works out okay, then yeah, I'll be happy about that. And how do you feel about it? Well, obviously I'm really happy because I really want to give the boys a brother or a sister and any new addition is just more love, isn't it? But I think having been through what we've been through over the years, it's taught me to appreciate everyone and everything every day for as long as it lasts. There's two ways that you can face any situation and it's fearfully or fearlessly. And um, for me, I know that it's probably gonna be our last. 
In fact, I'm pretty sure... It's definitely our last. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. <laughs> so I'm just going to embrace everything that comes with it and um, just enjoy the ride. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. Good. Just woke up from a massive cat nap and pretty nervous about today because, again, we've been having some complications. Well, this wasn't exactly how I was expecting an ultrasound routine scan to pan out. The scan revealed no heartbeat and also that I had a life-threatening caesarean scar ectopic pregnancy the odds of which are only one in every 25,000 and without immediate surgery could be fatal. I'm in an ambulance and I'm going to Patras Hospital because the world of craziest things has happened in the last couple of days and my whole entire life has been turned upside down. I literally can't even believe this is happening. As you can see, I'm currently on a ferry, just kind of mentally processing it all. Going on my own, I'm going 60 kilometers away, I'm also staying with boys and all of our family and friends are coming for a big holiday today and tomorrow for a whole week to celebrate me and Ross's 10 year anniversary. And I'm not even gonna be there. Welcome to my questionable new digs. I miss my boys. Hello, happy anniversary. Yeah, I'm all right. Okay, yeah. All right, have a lovely day. Yeah, love you, bye. So, obviously I have a lovely big empty room and I need my husband. He's coming up today and actually it's a little bit later on in the day now, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's about 10 minutes until he arrives. Getting out now, yeah. hiya. Oh, hello, you oh. Side by side, oh, the wind's really calmed down. It's our anniversary today. You get to kiss on camera. They already know. So Ross hasn't gone short of his favourite thing in the world. What happened? I saw five of these bad boys in the fridge, so I bought them all. <laughs> Cleared the hospital fridge of beer. Only you could do that. And now we're having a movie night, aren't we? What kind of a husband? drinks a Freddo espresso in front of his wife who is on nil by mouth. That kind. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm glad you came anymore. <clears throat> Even in the hot Operation day. I am out, I am upright, I'm good, I have cried all my makeup off. I'm already like just a few hours after surgery and feeling like I just want to take this out, get my shoes on, go for a walk, get outside into the sunshine and get back to my life. I'm very well aware that this vlog is going to be quite in arrears and that is actually because occasions like this happen and it means that we can slow life down a little bit. In this case, grief. I'm obviously going through a lot mentally at the moment and processing all kinds of trauma and all kinds of emotions. Thank you to everybody that at this time, when I was being a bit more open about it on social media, I know I didn't disclose the exact details of what's happened and you're probably just finding out now, but please know if you were one of those people, it has meant everything to me and it's carried me through some really dark moments that perhaps I don't often show, but they happen. And when they do, I tend to be a bit more quiet uh, just because I like to go inwards and kind of deal with it myself. And a second thank you to everyone who comments, likes, subscribes, and joins the crew, probably as a part of this journey or has been here for a while and been supporting us through all the good stuff as well. We appreciate every single one of you. Thanks for being there. Thanks for watching. Let's get back on the ocean. You look like you got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who wants to get out of here? Me! Put your hand up. Who wants to go and live back on a boat? Me! <laughs> Me! Potato chips! What? I have an obsession with potato chips. <laughs> okay. You chose me. So I held you. 
two bodies made of one said I'd keep you safe and sound that doesn't matter now I loved you I knew you only for a while And though it hurts to know That I'll never see your smile It doesn't matter now Pitter-patter, pitter-patter Doesn't matter now there's nothing in a million tears that can bring you back around. Pitter patter, pitter patter, doesn't matter now. Oh, I love you all my many years, and that's all that matters now. Dream to dream of all the things, and that you make me proud. I'd lie with you, I'd die for you That's all that matters now Maybe you're in the colors of a lovely summer's day Maybe you're in the spirits that guide me along my way You'll live on in the sunshine And in children as they play You'll live inside each memory I carry through my day Oh, I loved you for a little and I'm thankful that you came You taught me how to live and love and enjoy my time again